Good morning. Uh, this paper is going to be presented by both uh, uh, Jean-Pierre Hébert and myself. I will be introducing it, and uh, Jean-Pierre uh, will be explaining more details about the work. And uh, to explain the background, starting with uh, the collaboration with, uh, with Jean-Pierre, this piece came about uh, by an invitation from me that mentioned that they welcome <coughs> me, uh, Elaine, and Janis explained that they welcome pieces which are collaborative. So I proposed that uh, to bring in Jean-Pierre Hébert, who is, uh, who is here with us and will be presenting and is a pioneer of uh, digital visual arts. <coughs> and uh, we met uh, in Santa Barbara in 2004 and started already a collaboration which was presented in 2005 in, at SIGGRAPH using mixed media. It was based on a, on a piece that used sand and drew on sand. <coughs> so that was the basis of our idea for the next collaboration and it helps me to be brief in my presentation. I will only take five, uh, five or seven minutes. Uh, the topic is Media Poetics, Metaphors and Myths in New Media and it's centered on the idea of metaphor and the role it could play in your media art. Uh, to give a little bit about the conceptual background of the work, it started with uh, the topic through the roadblocks and taking up within my personal uh, interests at the moment, at the time, it was more through the domains. I was working with uh, the languages of seals and swallows and also shortwave spy stations coded messages and trying to find out how to create new languages that go between those domains, co cooperate between those domains in a sense of not only cross-cultural but also cross-species communication. Uh, the theoretical background for this work was at first uh, the work of Bernie Krause, who is an acoustic biologist and a uh, soundscape artist, and whose latest work is a great animal orchestra that explains how uh, communication between species happens in the acoustic domains, in, in the soundscapes of, uh, of the seas, of the jungles, tropical, uh, tropical forests, and other forests. Then uh, another layer came uh, slightly after that, extending this idea even to in inanimate matter. It's a theoretical work by philosopher Jane Bennett uh, that was published in her main, main work, Vibrant Matter and Political Economy of Things, and uh, tries to lift uh, the bridge between, lift the, the, the roadblocks, build a bridge between animate and inanimate. The, motiv the motivation between, uh, behind that being uh, the need to found uh, an ecological, a new uh, ecological uh, consciousness in the way the human species interact with its environment. The idea being that we should uh, be more sensitive about the environment, the non-linear environment, as being also a sentient kind of thing. So it is a philosophical foundation uh, or investigation of how inanimate can also be a sentient or uh, a, a type of, of being that's at the same level as we humans are, who consider ourselves the crown of, of uh, the creation, may not be so. Uh, so one key concept in approaching all this complex and difficult problem was the idea of metaphor and an easy way to address this is uh, in this uh, famous um, popular film in Postino when Pablo Neruda explains to the young postman that poetry is metaphors but the background of it uh, is, is far more uh, far-reaching, way more far-reaching, and uh, at about the same time, it's found in the work of Lakoff and Johnson, 
and later also another book by Lakoff, uh, Metaphors We Live By and Women Find Dangerous Things, which uh, was breaking ground at the time in cognitive science because it uh, introduced a different way to approach the whole problem of cognition and planning and problem solving that was not based on logic and computation, but was based on metaphors. And metaphors are important, and that's my main point, for, ground, uh, for art because they ground us, because metaphors connect us to everyday experience. So, like often Johnson say, metaphor is pervasive in everyday life, not just in language, but in thought and action. Our ordinary conceptual system, in terms of which we both think and act, is fundamentally metaphorical in nature. And they explain the essence of metaphor is understanding and experiencing one kind of thing in terms of another. Uh, so, the metaphor, metaphor in media, the metaphor behind media is understanding the interchange of information between media as metaphor and uh, very briefly, uh, the, the way I understand this is that metaphor creates not just a mapping from one domain to another, but a system in which information or meaning is, is exchanged in both ways between domains. Right? It creates a kind of cybernetic feedback loop, loop where both the origin of domain and the target domain are changing. They are at the same level. So this brings us to understand physical computing or nature in the loop as a metaphorical system, where physical objects and digital objects cooperate to produce a system that interacts with the environment. And in installations, in art installation, uh, the human in, in the loop comes also into play, also with live coding and the individual interaction and participation. Final part of my talk before I hand over to Jean Pierre. Um, is a sketch of nar Narcissus. It started with the idea of Ovid Smith, uh, that is Narcissus and Echo, where, uh, where Echo is in love with Narcissus, but Narcissus rejects her, so Echo disappears and becomes just the echo, just sound, and Narcissus is transformed into, in, into a flower. So there are at least four levels in this myth. There's Narcissus and Echo, which are mythical persons, and there is a flower in the water, the next transformation. Then there is physical, phys visible beauty and invisible sound. And finally, there is presence and absence. So moving from the more concrete and human-like levels all the way up to the most abstract levels. That's a metaphorical <coughs> process. Different levels of metaphors in different domains that connect in a similar relationship. It's a kind of structuralist, a bit, a bit way of structuralist thinking like we know it way back from uh, 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 Claude de uh, And in, in our piece, uh, Narcissus is the, the separatist structure, and uh, echo is the sound. And accordingly, different types of pairs appear, which is uh, the, the separatist structure and water, the reflection and movement, and sound, and finally, the statue which you see and the sound which you hear. Uh, I want to stop here because uh, seven minutes are way over and uh, drop here.